Yes, welcome back. <laughs> Lovely to have you on another episode of Living the Dram. I'm Rickus. I'm Hursty. And uh, today's theme is... Lafroy. Woo! You got your wish, dude. We went to Isla. Yay! <laughs> it took us three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, if... I should have, I should have just, oh yeah, and today's distillery is Glen Turret. <laughs> Another fucking Highland and just watched, watched your face. <laughs> oh, I would have cried. Yeah. I wouldn't have cried. I get to drink whiskey yeah, and talk true, shit true. about it, but I would have been, yeah, would have had my sad face on. <laughs> yeah, fucking another Highland. <laughs> not, not that there's anything wrong with Highlands, but what's wrong with Isla? Nothing. There's everything right with Isla. Yeah. Yeah, true. Certainly my favourite region. The um, For me, that's what whiskey's all about. It's all about the peat. Well, it's, all, it's what Scotch whiskey's all about. Yeah, I, I, it took me a while to jump on the bandwagon, but I, I finally did. I finally did. Like, yeah, like I said in a previous episode, um, a colleague of mine said, no, if he's if he's going for a scotch, he's going for the most saltiest, smokiest motherfucker that he can find. Because yep. <clears throat> there's really wonderful expressions of other types of whiskey. I mean, the Japanese do amazing whiskeys. Yeah, but um, that's, um, that's almost polar opposite. It's so light and delicate. Exactly. Exactly. And complex. Mm. But yes, the reason we're visiting Lafroig um, for this episode is uh, because we went on a Lafroig tasting evening uh, oh, very recently sure. with the inestimable Dan Woolley, uh, ambassador for Lafroig. What a guy! Hell yeah! <laughs> that's uh, that's a dude who is literally living the dram. Oh, is he what? Mm. So. Because we're freshly educated on the distillery, we thought that it was a good time to go to Lafroig, or go to Isla and Lafroig, mm-hmm. and enjoy some smoky, sultry, voluptuous whiskey. Still jealous that he had his wedding at the distillery. That was cool. Second best wedding photos I've ever seen, anyway. <laughs> that, lacking a certain... Uh, Star Wars character. Yeah, well, the best wedding photos <laughs> I've seen was uh, someone being married by Darth Vader. That's, you know, it doesn't get any cooler than that, no matter what distillery you go to. But uh, that's a dude who knows a hell of a lot about whiskey, hell of a lot about Lafroig. Uh, it was a really wonderful evening. Uh, shout out to Webster's. Yeah, for thanks hosting. for having us. That was awesome. That's a great place. If you like a, if, if you like a whiskey, if you like a drink in a cool place, visit Webster's. But if you, mm. especially if you like your whiskey, they've got a really yeah. great range. Yeah, good selection without the, uh, without the price tag of another well-known whiskey establishment in town. <laughs> but we enjoyed our time there. We uh, we enjoyed the evening. Uh, they they, we tasted some fucking amazing whiskeys. Mm, tell me about it. That I, um, I think the final whiskey of the night may have ruined me for mm. anything younger than twenty eight years old. That's it. <laughs> I, I only drink mature age. Yeah. <laughs> that um, yeah, like I said to Dan, the um, that Carchis, yeah, twenty nineteen. I've got a couple of bottles of that on the shelf that I haven't opened yet, and they're going to struggle to stay corked. I think. Hell yeah, that was a massive whiskey. Mm, mm. That was so. That literally punched me in the face <laughs> in a really nice way. With a fistful of love. So what we we went ten year. We started with the ten year, the yeah. flagship. Yeah. And which it was that's hundred percent ex American uh, bourbon oak. I think Maker's Mark. Yeah, ma- yeah, that's what he said. Maker's Mark or um, what would you say the provisors of all the all the barrel the American oak that uh, Lafroig use and the Lafroig 10 year old is the backbone of Lafroig whiskey I mean mm. the that 10 year old's in you know makes up a, it's the foundation the building blocks on yeah. which all the other whiskeys are, yeah, are built on everything yeah um, although it's I guess yeah there's probably even in the PX cast mm. that we're going to visit a bit later on there, might, there has to be a, a, a portion of it You'd think so. Yeah. But yeah, we did the 10-year-old. Then we did the 10-year-old 
Cask no, strength. Batch 10 cask strength. Batch 10. I saw uh, they have batch 11 for sale on their website. Yeah, right. Yeah. But that was that was potent. Mm. That was big. But it was, it was strange how much less peat there was on the nose. I don't know if the, the alcohol um, overrode that. Yeah, it was it was a similar profile to the ten year old, but just uh, I remember saying on the night, just a slightly condensed. Yeah, 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 the narrower lane. Yeah, yeah it uh, just didn't have quite the um, breadth. Is the the only word I can use to describe it on the nose. Um, but we then went to the triple wood, then the Karcher's nineteen year old. Yeah, God, which is also a triple wood. And um, I have a little. I think I took down a breakdown of. Okay, no. So the triple wood. The triple wood was um, American oak aged, anywhere from five to eleven years, then a quarter cask, then a Spanish Oloroso, uh, a five hundred liter bud. God bless those Spaniards. Mm. Uh, then the catches. The fifteen. The fifteen. Yeah, fifteen year old. I think that was cask strength as well. It didn't, it certainly lacked the, but not lack, it didn't, it was a little more delicate than the uh, batch 10. Yeah, that, that might have been the, the age. True. Yeah. But that was, that like, was an exceptional whiskey as well. As they say, like, yeah, the younger whiskey is the more angular it tends to be, and as he gets older, it True. tends so to round smoother. up a little bit so on the palate. much smoother. But the, that was a, an exceptional whiskey, and we, we rounded out the night... With a twenty-eight-year-old, God, oh, it was just fucking bliss. Yeah, that's probably it. Is probably the best dram I have ever had. It's right up there. I I can't think. Nothing's coming to mind that was yeah a more impressive dram than that. That was smoother, silkier, more decadent. Just. Everything I want in a whiskey. Or was it to, um, basically salted caramel on the nose? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, but it, it, yeah. I mean, it wasn't as as huge on the nose as the uh, the twenty nineteen, which was yeah, it's, yeah, it's smacked well, in the that face. That was, was very very complex. I think that yeah. twenty eight wasn't quite as complex, but God, I just about to piss myself thinking about it again. It was actually. just all the best things about all the. The preceding whiskies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just, yeah, that was superb. That may, as I said, that may have ruined me for <laughs> for the future. If if it's not at least twenty nine years old, mm. I'm, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And we have our bottles to select on the way. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. That was one of the perks of the evening. Um, getting a, a personalised bottle of the select cask. Uh, you could you could basically choose your own label, which would be somewhat akin to, uh, yeah, it was this one. This is off the top of the PX um, bottle and says, um, standing next to a burning candy store in a big peat bog. <laughs> and that was by Florian Zwoboda. Hopefully I didn't push your name, Florian. I, I think it'll be okay if you did. It's on the podcast. So what was... Do you remember what you you chose to write? I do remember what I chose to write. I uh, chose to write uh, like a punch in the face and a cheeky butt slap from a Pete Bog dominatrix. That's right. That's right. It was mine. Um, like rinsing with dead all after chewing the finger of a third degree burn victim, I think. <laughs> I think it was mine. Trying to trying to yeah invoke a little bit of a corpse grinder. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, that's death as fuck. <laughs> that's my style. <laughs> so it was a great evening. Oh, uh, blissful evening. Uh, blissful. Props to to Dan for knowing his shit. Props to Webster's for hosting it. Um, and as a result, let's visit Lafroy. Here we are. Here we are. So Lafroy, obviously in LA. Um, single malt scotch whiskey distillery and it's uh named after the area um of land at the head of Loch Refroig on the south coast of the Isle of Isla uh 
they say it was established in 1815 by um, Donald and Alexander Johnston on land at least from the Campbells but there's rumours um, that the brothers actually built the site in 1810 when they started farming in the area and the distillery was not officially registered until 1826. Yeah, I think I read something like that, that they got the land as grazing, like it was okay. gra cattle grazing land. Sure. And so you were allowed to, well, you had to grow barley for winter feed. Okay. And with the excess of the barley, they started making beer and then uh, distilling okay. whiskey as well. And then they realized that that was far more profitable than I have a feeling raising that cattle. That I have a feeling that that still happens today, that the yeah. um, the used barley basically goes to feed still. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, I just, yeah, I saw a picture anyway of a truck being loaded full of, that said, yeah, um, feed. Cool. Yeah, um, I want to refer to Donald Johnston as Dojo from now on, just because <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the Johnsons who founded the distillery, um, they were likely from Clan Donald, um, and the family anglicised their name to Johnston back in the day because we all know anyone who's seen Braveheart understands how cunty the English were to the Saxons. <laughs> so yeah, in order to not have your lovely wife deflowered by some pommy piece of shit yeah anglicizing your name seems like a pretty pretty good idea yeah that's fair yeah um so in 1836 uh, dojo bought out al for uh 350 pounds what a fucking bargain <laughs> although by 1836 standards that's that's probably quite a Quite a princely sum. Look, I'd, I'd love say. to just pull a sum, a, a number, a digit out of my ass, but it would be exactly what it is. I have <laughs> absolutely no idea what it would convert to with inflation and current you know, what are we all economical talking? standards. And it was probably lots. Well, it's nearly 200 years on. Yeah, 3% for 3.5% for... I can't do compound in no, that, that <laughs> fucking quickly. <laughs> I was about to suppose fuck dude, you should be on a maths podcast. <laughs> no, I could break it down for somebody else to do the hard yards. <laughs> yeah, um But yeah, enough to enough to get into Australia, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well Alexander emigrated to Australia. He died here in eighteen eighty one. And um if you feel like sharing a dram with Alex, letting him know what he missed out on. Um, he's buried with his wife Flora up at uh, Sandgate, Newcastle. Nice area, Newcastle. But <laughs> a sad tale. Um, unfortunately, 11 years later, in 1847, Dojo died two days after um, from the burns that he sustained after falling into a vat of boiling ale. <laughs> well... At least he went doing what he loved. <laughs> well, I can't... Yeah, being boiled alive sounds like one of the most horrendous things you could ever have happen to you. And drowning at the same time. Like, that's... that's... He didn't drown, though. He died two days later from oh, okay, horrendous right. burns. Well, but... uh, yeah, you're right. But that's drowning fun. via yeah, boiling yeah, liquid, yeah. like that, that having sucked. your lungs suffer fucking 26 degree burns. That's the quinella, but... The trifecta is getting shot or stabbed and then falling into the bat of boiling... The, the bat of boiling ale. The bat of boiling ale. And, I reckon being shot and afterwards then... would be worse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, you fell. Oh, I put you out of your misery. Yeah, oh, yeah, fuck, fuck, I missed. I, I got in the shoulder. Oh, well. Now you're drowning. You know what? This will make a good story. For me, anyway. These days, though, someone would whip out their fucking phone. <laughs> oh, film it, film it. Put it on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. <laughs> well, that sucks. So, who inherited the distillery? Then? Uh, Dougal. Dojo's son, Dougal. Uh, but he couldn't run it because he was only 11. Fuck it. Yeah. 
running a distillery at 11 is probably outside of my skill set yeah. too. So if your surname was Johnston, be the least creative you can think of and come up with a first name for your son. John. Yeah. So his <laughs> uncle, John Johnston, <laughs> uh, he acted as one of the trustees. And um, he got old mate Walter Graham from the neighbouring Lagerfullen distillery. So um, hang on. To... Was, so it was John, Donald and Alexander. Were they the three brothers? Quite possibly. I didn't, yeah. Well, maybe it was maybe it was an uncle on the mother's side. Oh, but his last name's Johnson. But who knows? It's a pretty incestuous... It'd be, it'd be a common name. Pretty incestuous place. As, um, you'd, you'd, you'd be pretty shitty, though, wouldn't you? Like, fucking... You got Dojo? Aljo? <laughs> Jojo? Jojo? <laughs> Fuck me! <laughs> oh, it must be in the youngest. Mm. But it's, um, I've seen photos like um there's a good aerial shot of Lafroy distillery and you can see like fallen is like fuck you could just about piss on it from the yeah from, right yeah, yeah I, from I, the kiln tower I, I, i've been told they were close yeah I, I don't think it's a very big island no um, but they pack a lot of punch don't they mm. um but in 1857 Dougal finally came of age took over the management from um Wall Gray. <laughs> uh, 20 years later, though, Dougal died and um, might have been shooting blanks because he had no legitimate heirs. So his cousin, who was also named Alexander, but we're going to call him Sandy for to make things a little bit easier. This Ooh. is where that incestuous remark I made up oh, yeah. came up with just before. Comes into the play... I'll read this legit because I'm still trying to get my head around it. Dougal died in 1877, leaving no legitimate heirs. So his cousin, Sandy, who had married Dougal's sister, Isabella, ran the distillery. Yeah, right. Hmm. Keeping it in the family. Yeah. I'm hoping... I'm hoping third cousin because... It could probably be even more i mean when you're on a little island like that you're probably keeping fairly close track of your bloodlines yeah so it, i mean but i think third cousins where it kind of gets okay i don't know is it really okay i mean i suppose it depends a, on where you a, stand from a genetic standpoint i think yeah. that's where it's you're least likely to run into well issues. we're all related to each other in some degree or another, is didn't don't we all go back to Genghis Khan? Like a great oh a fuckload of people yeah, do. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. You know, the, some ridiculous amount of yeah. you know, Anyway, I'm not an expert, not even well enough versed to make it yeah you know, any more than a casual comment. <laughs> but yeah, hey, look, I'm not against you know incest. Mm. It's, it's horses for causes. Oh, I just, right. I just yeah, you know, I'm not against anything. I just yeah. You know, let people be and sure you have a rage at them when they you know, get my way <laughs> I'm sure you have a cousin or an aunt that you find attractive don't go there <laughs> yeah I did think about it though but I, I, I came up with nothing uh, so yeah Sandy he ran the show for about 30 years and he apparently died at Lefroy and um and just to make things quite confusing, he'd left four wheels, <laughs> no less, no more. Uh, so the court case has dragged on for years past Sandy's death. As it would. Mm. And then um, in the meantime, Sandy's sisters, Catherine and Isabella. So another Isabella. Another um, Isabella. Can we call her Izzy? Yeah, we'll call her Izzy Sweet. just to make things a bit easier. Well, I'm so, already fucking confused. Yeah. <laughs> it's more confusing than Father's Day in Campbelltown. <laughs> That's Western Sydney, not, not Scotland. I'm sure it's probably fucking worse there. <laughs> in the they 1800s, make, anyway. They make good whiskey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can forgive them for that. I like Campbelltown whiskey. Uh, Campbelltown, Western Sydney, however, their they, whiskey. They, they don't make good whiskey. No, avoid that if you ever get offered. That's probably. It's probably leaded petrol. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so in 1907, Sandy died at the Freug. Um, he left four wheels. Catherine and Izzy, 
then took control of the distillery. Um, in 1908, uh, so the following year, I believe Ian Hunter um, came to assist, and I believe his mother was Catherine. Um, so yeah, he came to assist his mum and aunts with running the distillery, and he was actually the last member of the Johnston family to run the show. Um, he did a, he did some good for the place though. Um, in 1923, so 15 years after he rocked up, um, he increased the number of stills from two to four. And sadly, in 28, when Izzy and Catherine both passed away, he became the sole owner of the company. Oh. Um, but it sounds like he had a good stint because in 1950 he formed um, that's Ian Hunter formed. D. Johnson and Company, who became the owners, so basically, I guess, formed a corporation. Nice. Um, four years later, though, he passed away, and he died childless. Childless. So he left the distillery to his longtime PA and secretary, Bessie Williamson. Bessie. Bessie. So an Isla girl, a local girl. She was a local girl. And um, what did you said earlier? She. The, she wanted to go global. I'm pretty sure I read that she uh, sold off part of the company uh, to make the required funds because she wanted to go global. She wanted to take Lafroy to the world, being the powerhouse, well, knowing it would be a powerhouse whiskey because it is bloody great. Mm. And um, I was, yeah, I was somewhat um, sad. I've got a, th- a bit of a thing for nostalgia and um, and purity of bloodlines, for the want of a better term. Um, it was a little bit sad until you told me that. And I'm like, no, that's... Yeah, good honour. Good honour for dreaming big. Yeah. Going large. I read a quote from uh, one of the... One of the distillers uh, that worked with her. I think she died just before the war. Um, but... And he just said she was a... Just a huge personality. Really awesome. strong, great leader. Took Lefroy to uh, a point where it was uh, a global global company and a, a, a genuine whiskey powerhouse so awesome good on yeah. strong women yeah. love them yeah. um the rest of their history is fucking boring you know what fuck it <laughs> I'm thirsty yeah yeah we've been fucking around for too long let's have a drink I know it's important to you know talk about the distillery and the history mm. of the distillery but no, from there it just it, the next 30 years it goes from fucking hand to hand to hand to hand and now it's in the capable hands of uh, Beam Suntory ah they know how to you know run these things they know how to run shit Suntory's uh, Japanese lines are fucking exquisite yeah that's true sorry for needless profanity there but they are quite good there's look I'm all for needless profanity that's <laughs> that's kind of my shtick that's, yeah but anyway thirsty let's uh Let's have a drink. Right. So, to start with. Oh, let's introduce what we've got here. We have the Refroig, the 1815 Legacy Edition. I think from there we'll move on to a uh, fresh bottle purchased just for the podcast. Uh, the Triple Wood, which we got to taste the other night and was delectable. Lovely. And we'll round it off with the PX cask. Um, my reasoning was um, it's it'll be kind of like the dessert, it'll be quite sweet, um, thanks to the uh, thanks to the Pedro Jimenez sherry influence. Lovely. And for, you've noticed that we haven't included the ten, or uh, which I suppose you would have, you could have thought, well, that's a, a natural place to start. But we decided to um, keep a no age statement theme with this group of whiskies. Lefroy will you know, show its face again down the track in future episodes, no doubt, um, on ILA-based uh, episodes. But for now, these are the expressions we're going to have a dram of this evening. Oh, no, heavy pour. I love it. I need a fuck spiders. Absolutely. That's... Uh, Pass that sucker over here, and let's get to uh, get on it. Whoa, get your nose into that. So straight away, with all, with 
with most Islas, certainly with um, with Lefroy, Lagavul and Arbeg, the first thing on the nose on any of their expression is is the peat. That they they celebrate the peat. Yeah. Um, and fuck, I celebrate the peat. <laughs> yeah, realistically, it's the there's the body of the peat for me is what gives the beautiful juxtaposition in really good Isla expressions of you, when you've got the, the sweat and especially anything that's XPX um, or X Oloroso you get the, the sweeter notes but it's the peat the contrast with the peat that really lets them sing so that's a tad healthy <laughs> <laughs> Bless you, you generous, generous man. So yeah, the first thing on the nose is the peat. That's slightly, you know, uh, iodine um, accompaniment on the nose. It, it smells like an NAS. Yeah, I, I, I really think um, you can smell the spice from the probably shorter duration. Uh, in wood from some of the whiskies in there. I do um, it's a little is it black currant? It's a that's what I, I that's what I got straight away. Yeah, like it's a it's there is a sweetness to it. A, like a dark berry black currant or blackberry. Yeah, I think it's more it's more current. Yeah, you might the peat right. wears off pretty quick. It's not it's not massive. It's not dominant. No, it's but it is the first thing. Uh, that, that Especially you... yeah, for a lot of people that um, where that islas scare the shit out of that. Yeah, it's hard for some people to get past that, mm. um, and and that's that's. So it, it takes some people like it some people don't yeah. you know, that's some where people... I started I found it really hard to get <laughs> to get past the dead old flavour yeah and that, whereas it was the the lag of and it was the peat that was the reason that I you know went oh yeah. fuck this is what I drink I drink whiskey and I drink scotch whiskey I drink smoky scotch whiskey mm. yeah this is quite delicate yeah it is this uh, there is a, a slight uh, floralness to it as well and what does this run out? 48. Actually, they're all at 48, so they're quite big. Decent robe. Not huge, but it's there. I do love to see it. You can... Yeah, the... The, the malt itself comes through nice. It's, it smells... It's nicely balanced on the nose. smell the salt of the sea mm. the waves crashing on the shore it's um it's very salty on the palate that's one of the first things i get from it very salty oh but there's the sweetness is starting to come through on the finish now those currents that you mentioned earlier yeah that's they're there they're present there's not a hell of a lot of dimension to it but there is absolutely nothing wrong with this at all. So, <clears throat> yeah, taste it's young on the first yeah. first sip. Yeah. There's that, um, yeah, the it hasn't had enough time in the wood to take out some of that um, sharpness. Small angles, mm. yeah, small angles. Yep, it's not a, not a full full cube. That's quite, quite nice. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> I haven't, I haven't visited this one for a while. That's um, far better than I remember. That's salt, uh, salty start. Yeah, kind of gives way to some strong but not overly strong peat. 
and then there is that that sweetness of the the dark fruit the the black currant hmm. it comes through on the finish yeah it's pretty nicely balanced maybe there's probably a little bit too much salt to it i think to be it's a it's a big open well balanced yeah it, it is a big open um and the it's just the you go looking for that softness of transition and it's not there so it transcend it transitions a little sharply um sorry that's your px i was good <laughs> a little more soften the up already donate. beautiful for a, I've been quite generous here, haven't I? Room for a real response But that's what happens when you get, <laughs> you get <laughs> bottles and not tasters. <laughs> and I thought that I might have run a bit short <laughs> on the uh, on the PX, so I actually have a backup bottle <laughs> just in case. <laughs> well, yeah, it's mm. always good to have a spare bottle. That's it's pretty much my motto. <laughs> I don't know if there's much more to say about this. Like, I don't. I'm not getting it too complex, really. It's it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, <clears throat> the finish isn't overly long. It's a touch bitter on the finish as well. It's probably the only thing. Like maybe a little bit of orange rind or lemon rind, mm. and with that finish, lemon, not orange. It lacks the sweetness of orange, and it's just mm. the, that. Yeah, kind of bitter rind taste mm. for mine. Those currants have started to give way to um, sort of more vanilla, vanilla and cream now to me. Ooh. Lucky you. Mm. Ooh, so this must be the triple wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... Uh, you can't tell on the nose that it's a no-age statement. Mm. It's got. Uh, I remember that being quite complex. Yeah, it does. It's, it's. I just wanted to before we jump to the triple wood, just say a little bit about the uh, the eighteen fifteen, um, which is um it was created by the current distillery manager John Campbell. I think he's been in charge since two thousand and six. Nice, roughly thereabouts. However, um, as I asked uh, Dan the other night, he's not related to the Campbells that um that uh, Dojo and Aljo originally leased the land from. That would have been kind of a nice full circle if, if he was. Would have been, but it's probably a pretty common name, I think. Yeah, he said that most of them on the island are either Johnstons or Campbells, yep. basically. Um, uh, but yeah, John Campbell, he created this as a tribute to the managers who preceded him. Um, it's, a, it's a travel retail exclusive. So yeah, I got this when I was um, duty-free. Cool. Uh, was left to rest in first fill overcharred ex bourbon barrels before further maturing in large new European oak hogsheads. I think a hogshead is, is two hundred liters, maybe. Oh no, no, two fifty. I think maybe might be two fifty. Um, and they've never been before used by this theory. Um. Apparently, quoted, the latter provide a slower matur maturation than traditional casks. So, it takes longer, I guess. I don't know. Um, and the signature peat smoke combined with the soft oak um, results in a whiskey of great depth. I kind of disagree there. I wouldn't say there's a hell of a lot of depth to it. Bit of marketing spin on that, but yeah. um, it's not a bad whiskey, don't get me wrong. No, not at all. Well, so good enough to win silver at the uh, International Wine and Spirits Competition this year and gold in 2017 nice. at the same competition. That's not bad for a no-age statement. Yeah, it's done quite well. It's uh, perfectly accessible, though, I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Ten years is probably a little bit smoother, but... Yep. But I'd have, I'd have no problem giving it to someone that was... Expressing an interest in Ira? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So sorry, now you can... I can, I can now nose my... Uh, yeah, yes, you have my permission. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> got a... Yeah. Got, <laughs> don't want to upset you. Pace yourself. That's it, exactly. 
heavy pause. If I, you know, who knows how this is going to go? But yeah, that's uh, that smells of uh, a triple wood. Smells of a little more complex. Uh, there's some. Ooh. It smells smooth. Um, sure does, but um, yeah, that sherry adds a deep, like pudding kind of aspect to it. Mm. And the uh, it's not so heavily peaty on the nose. No, I think the the sherry but really um, helps cut through that. It softens it a lot. Yeah, it's much softer on the nose than. It's slightly flurry. You can really smell the sherry. Yeah, it's much much softer on the nose. Yep. Than um, the eighteen fifteen. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, looks much Is there more. Some, some vanilla, as well. vanilla custard in there, maybe. I reckon there is vanilla custard. I think there's yeah. a hint of nutmeg in there as well. I don't think I've ever smelt nutmeg. I fucking I use it in cooking, but I've never. There you go. Mm. For me, nutmeg smells like eggnog. But that's simply because the two times I've had eggnog, it was had nutmeg okay. sprinkled on the top of it. So I, I think that's why the two are synonymous. What the fuck is nutmeg? Ah, uh, you know what? That's a fucking good question. I believe it's the nut of the Meg tree. I don't believe that at all. No. I believe... Well, I don't, is, it, is it a... I mean, cinnamon's a bark. It might be that kind of kind of similar thing. There's some kind of spice. Mm. It's a spice. Yeah. yeah. That's what... Sorry, right. <laughs> That's all we... Yeah. We can debate it for ages. Oh, we, we, we can. can. I mean, I can... I can you know, spend another thousand words on this topic and we'll get no closer to, to a resolution. Mm. But I'm happy to spend them. And then there's that beautiful salty wash mm. through it as well that is just delightful. It's really lovely on the nose. Mm. So we took, I took a couple of notes the other night from the, from the triple wood. Yeah, I think I've, I believe I've said this already that um, American oak aged five to ten years then it spends a bit of time in quarter cask and then it's moved on to a Spanish Oloroso uh, 500 litre butt and a quarter cask is a American oak American whiskey ex bourbon cask that's then cut down yeah yeah that's what he said didn't yeah, he yeah, cut, yeah. cut down 30% or something like that yeah Oh no, it's got, um, I said it has 30% more contact with the wood. Yeah, so the yeah. smaller... The ratio. The, the, the smaller cask allows more of the spirit to spend time in contact with the wood. Yeah. But the... It certainly has an, an impact on it. Mm. I remember, yeah, when we got to this one, this was... Um, I found this quite amazing. It was like no Lafroy I'd tried before. Uh, the robe on this is yeah, it's much it's, more viscous, it's voluptuous. Mm. It really is. It's, it's a, a little little deeper in color too, and I think yeah. that's the um. Oh, uh, not overly, just only just. Yeah, maybe just a touch. Yeah. Depending on what's behind it. I mean, it's a lot if there's something black behind it, but. but <laughs> there you know, there. Yeah, that's a drastic difference. You can taste the um, the pepper, the peppery sort of um, instantaneously on the tongue, but the and the finish is quite sweet. But it's not the same. Um, it's definitely not the same currants. No, it's um <clears throat> different throat> sweetness. It's more. Hmm, actually, I need to revisit second sip. Might yeah, first sip much softer than the eighteen fifteen. Um, there's spice there, but it's not overpowering. It's mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't taste young, like the eighteen fifteen. Okay, does. see for my money, it tastes younger than the eighteen fifteen. So I, I I feel it tastes a little 
a little more mature, but this is just first taste, and it may just be okay. uh, comparatively at the moment. But jump back. You're right. The the finish is sweet, long, mm. as well. Okay. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it doesn't taste as young as the um. No, it definitely yeah, doesn't. Right. It's, it's smoother on on first and second mouthful. The second mouthful, uh, that pepper, um, is still there, but it gives way. A little bit more to the cereal, to the malt itself. Uh, the peat is a gentle accompaniment with this. It's it doesn't it supports. Yeah, yeah, it's a really lot, nice. It's, it's really it's, nice compliment, and it really supports the sherry. You know, those those sweet sherry notes start coming through toward the finish, and that the the peat really boosts it and. Fuck, it's got legs, like mm -hmm. long legs on that finish. Yeah, it's going forever. So going back and nosing it after drinking it, there's a little bit of, I think, maybe some dark chocolate in there. So yeah, that's probably um, the sweetness. Mm. But it's not like it's more like a... 65 percent cacao yeah it's not like so you're right, it's, it's, it's not, not the bitterness of it it's cacao yeah it's, uh... mm, that still is gorgeous it's delicious yeah that, nice. that is that is a really fucking nice whiskey yeah farm yeah really nice complexity to it you you could talk for ages about this i reckon Yeah, the combination of of the peat, the oak, and the sherry is uh, it's genuinely fucking delightful. The balance is there. Nothing's overly dominant. It's got a beautiful finish to it. It's, it's for for a no age statement. It's exceptional. Mm. It really is exceptional. Mm. It's very peppery though. Every sip that I've had, it is. that white pepper is dancing around on the back of my tongue. Yep. But it is um. But it's pepper in balance. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's still there's the sweetness on the sort of the middle. The peppers kind of at the back and on the edges. Um, the sweetness lingers long in the middle of the tongue. It does, and the the salt's not as um, overwhelming. At the start, mm. like the mm -hmm. the eighteen fifteen is the salts um, at it. It's there at the beginning. It you know carries it through, and then there's a soft transition to the smoke that then you know softly transitions into the sherry and the the, the length and just mm. it lingers. But it's the sherry that lingers the most. The the the, the smoke uh, trails off delicately. Mm. Delicately. Yeah, the wood is coming, becoming quite pronounced in the 1815. And the, yeah, the triple cast just has that extra dimension. Mm -hmm. It's, um, yeah, with the sweetness, with the sherry. It's been, um, pretty highly awarded, though, the triple cast. You've got, we've got a, we've got a silver outstanding, which apparently is, yeah, is the echelon above, just standard silver. Um, in 2017 International Wine and Spirits Competition a silver in the same year at the International Spirits Challenge um, a silver in 2016 at the International Spirits Challenge uh, gold 2016 International Wine and Spirits Competition so they failed to back up um, 2016 to 2017 even though they got silver outstanding they must have had some pretty good competition. Mm. Um, then from there, gold 2015 San Francisco World Spirit Awards, gold 2013 San Francisco World Spirit Awards, gold 2013 from the Beverage Tasting Institute, um, silver outstanding 2013 International Wine and Spirits Competition. So it's yeah, it's got, it's some, got some. It's got some awards chops. Damn straight. I can totally see why. 
can totally taste and smell why. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Those are that is really really nice. Complex, very complex. Almost every sip is different. You can focus on a different element with every sip. But ah, for those of you that have ever bought a bottle of Laphroaig, you may notice at the top, the very, very top of the bottle, uh, there's a there's a logo. It's kind of like the fleur de lis. Uh, it's three feathers and a crown. Uh, that's actually uh, it was Laphroaig was awarded the um, was it the royal warrant? I believe it's called Royal Warrant of Appointment. If you read the text just underneath the logo, it says, By appointment to HRH, the Prince of Wales, distiller and supplier of single malt Scotch whiskey, D. Johnson & Co., Laphroaig, Isle of Isle. That's a, uh, that's a pretty impressive symbol to have on your whiskey. How many other whiskies have that symbol on them? None, Michael. I believe none. Uh, it's a yeah, it's a nice little uh, token to lord over your opposition. Hell yeah! So does that mean technically that that's uh, his favourite whiskey? I believe so. I believe so. That's some that's some pretty big fucking chops. Damn straight. Uh, this was awarded in uh, 1994. Um, however, the distillery. And now here it says um. Oh, Prince of Wales, okay. Um, in Scotland, uh, these recognised as the Duke of Rothsay. Um, and uh, the 15-year-old, apparently, was his favourite dram. Good on him. Um, and in the same year, 1994, uh, a special 10-year-old Laphroaig was bottled called the Royal Warrant. Nice. So what the fuck is a royal warrant? Some of you are probably asking. A royal warrant of appointment, to be more specific. What the fuck is a royal I'm warrant glad of appointment? Glad you asked, Thirsty. Glad you asked. That's what I'm here to do. Royal warrants of appointment have been issued since the 15th century to those who supply goods or services to a royal court or certain royal personages. Pardon me. Uh, the warrant enables the supplier to advertise the fact that they supply to the royal family, so it lends prestige to the brand or the supplier. And that's fair. I mean, that's that's a fairly prestigious... I, I reckon if I was sitting in front of two whiskies that both looked good, there was no one around to tell me that one was better than the other. I'd never drunk either of them before. They were both from Isla. And you saw this little fucker. One had a fucking logo on it that said, hey, the prince drinks this. I'd be like, well, fuck. If it's good enough for the fucking prince, it's good enough for me. Good. So that's the one I'd choose. So, yeah, in the UK, um, grants are currently made by the three most senior members of the British royal family to companies or tradespeople who supply goods and services to individuals in the family. So who's that? Is that basically Prince Phil... Queen Lizzie and Charlie. It would be. I'm guessing. They're Look, I'm no, I'm no monarchist, but they, they those names make sense. Mm -hmm. I reckon there are some monarchists out there that probably are just that enamoured with the royal family that this is. Once they found this out, they're like, "Fuck, all right, yeah, oh, fucking drink that." <laughs> they probably never tried another dram. Yeah, fair enough. I, I, look, if if you're a staunch monarchist, if that's what floats your boat, yeah, right, fuck, good on you. This is the whiskey for you. <laughs> it was pretty interesting how it all came about, actually. It was on um, Wednesday the 29th of June in 1994, which is, what, two weeks after my 13th birthday. I was going to say, it's a while back. Yeah. Um, it, old Charlie was, um, went to pay an official visit to Laphroaig, um... And the visit was well documented, however, the columns were not so much filled with uh, details of his visit as they were with his pl 
plane crash. <laughs> uh, Charles, he overshot the runway, um, attempting to land his plane on uh, the windy aisle. And the plane was so badly damaged that he was unable to fly back home to Highgrove. And um, as a result, a 20-minute visit turned into a two-and-a-half-hour stay. <laughs> And apparently when a new plane rocked up, he left in um, somewhat of a hurry. That's conjecture. He would have been half cut. I'd like to think. (laughs) Fuck, absolutely would be. If you were stuck at a distillery, well, not even stuck, you were at a distillery and you were waiting for a lift for two and a half hours, you're drinking whiskey. I'd I'd be there overnight. Yeah, I I wouldn't. I would have had three drams and gone, you know what? They've just uncorked a special cask for me. Why don't you guys just uh, store the... Just come Mm. pick me up in the morning. This actually will... Okay, two. There's no such thing as (laughs) ABT. And three, you are the Prince of fucking Wales. (laughs) Yeah, you're going to do what you want. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, probably maybe he did get half cut and... Check this out, boys. A couple of loop de loops on the <laughs> on the way home. Uh, tops. Yeah, but um, on that visit, he was um, he was invited to bung two casks. Um, the casks were actually given to him in the end, and he kindly donated them to charity funds. Uh, one was a '78, uh, which was bottled as a 15 year old, and they auctioned that for the Cancer Relief Macmillan Fund. Um, the other was a 1983 cask, and that was to be matured for another five years and uh, commemorate his 50th birthday which was so it was also bottled as a 15 year old and in 1999 uh, I was given to an appeal for Erkine, Erskine Hospital for um, ex-servicemen in Dumbarton uh, most of the 1983 bottles were sold through Loch Fine whiskies uh, the prince also personally signed 15 of the 270 bottles with his name, um, but just simply Charles. And they were auctioned. Some of them went for as much as £29,000. That would be a nice little, uh, nice bit of glassware to have in, on your shelf. Uh, that'd be so hard not to drink, too. <laughs> the motherfuckers that did crack it are yeah. <laughs> probably pissed. Oh, it? yeah. Oh, actually, well, they got auctioned before before they were received so I'd say there's probably still a fair few of those in circulation yeah right and um for Charlie's personal consumption he received this cute itty bitty little commemorative cask if you check out the photos it's a uh, yeah that'd be that'd be quite nice to have on the shelf as well oh I posted on the Instagram nice neat little barrel um and since since his visit uh, the distillery does a special bottling for Highgrove, which has um, Highgrove's own label, and it can be bought by visitors in the shop um, on his Gloucestershire estate. And the bottlings are either the standard ten or sometimes fifteen-year-old. Cool. Which are uh, fifteen-year-olds getting harder to come by. As is the eighteen-year-old. Little tidbit, because that was discontinued in twenty fifteen. Is that because they're going back to a fifteen-year-old? I'm not 100% sure there, but I know that the the Karchis, like, yeah, it was a 15-year-old, I think, to, as Dan said, um, because they stopped doing the 15-year-olds and all the friends of Lefroy, they basically demanded the 15-year-old. The (laughs) 15-year-old was fantastic. Bring it back. All right, cool. Well, let's one-up all you friends of Lefroy and give you a cask strength 15-year-old. Yep. Speaking of which, Friends of Lefroy, a little bit on that. Anyone who's ever bought a bottle of Lefroy may have noticed they are a little ticket um, in the box. Do not throw this out. You're an absolute fool if you do. Uh, jump on the Lefroy website. You'll find a code in your ticket. And uh, you enter that code in and you become what is called Friend of Lefroy. And um, that offers you... You get discounts in the online store. Um, you get opportunity to buy the Friends Special Bottlings, which are basically all the Karchus range, um, like most Gaelic words or Scottish words. 
Kaitis is pronounced and nothing like it is spelt. Yeah. Spelled C A I R D E A S. You will there will be so many opportunities for you to say a Gaelic or Scottish word wrong. Yeah, just just All be okay with it. Yeah, just 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 roll with it. You know, someone will tell you how to say it right one day and then you'll make a meal of it. Eventually you'll just not give a fuck. I'm sure heaps of people are gonna um correct us as this goes on. Hundred percent. I, I, we we we'll be lucky to get one out of ten. <laughs> Thanks, Siobhan. <laughs> uh That also entitles you being a friend of Lafroy. Uh, yeah, you get like invitations to uh, events and competitions, um, some news. But probably the coolest thing ever. Become a landowner. You get to become a laird. Um, you get your own honorary square foot of land, um, an honorary plot in Lefroig's treasure to peat fields, one square foot of land um, you can sort of call home. Absolutely. You could go and you know, stand on one foot and be entirely within your own realm, mm -hmm. maybe two feet depending on how big your feet were. There are certain things that you get. Um, from, I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna have to break the rule and bust out my phone here. The certificate, the deed certificate, is actually really really cool. I'm glad you did it first. Um, there are certain things that they give you, and it's on my iPad. So forget that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you do you get a uh, size twelve pair of Wellingtons because a size twelve is approximately one foot in length uh, oh they, nice they give you a uh, what do you call it like a sat nav that's so right a GPS uh, location to take you to the exact, the exact longitude and foot. latitude of your square foot I do believe also you get a uh, some sort of jacket or raincoat uh, to battle the uh, inclement LA weather and most importantly you will get a dram of liquid gold to take with you as a, you stand there. A dram for your rent. Yeah, yeah, that is your rent. I'm not sure if you can come back, uh, if that could be a daily dram. If... I was going to say, like, you know, if, if I've been a friend of Lefroy for a long time, don't they owe me a shitload of back rent? <laughs> like... I think that's in your, in, your, uh, in your deed certificate. It actually doesn't work that way. Yeah, clever fuckers. Yeah. But still, that's a it's a great little gimmick. Not uh, sorry, that's it's not a gimmick. It's a great mm -hmm. little value add on. Yeah, it's, yeah, uh, it it's, is. It's, it's, it's a nice it's, touch. It is. It, I think. Um, yeah, there's there's uh, certainly the the cautious range, um, and the ability to you know, get those whiskies. Uh, and I, this doesn't cost you anything. You know, you just get your little. You know. <clears throat> cost you whatever, you whatever you paid for a bottle which yeah, is you're, fucking well worth it in its and, own right. and in your bottle there's a unique reference number mm. your URN and you just go on uh, www dot www dot www you know what fuck the W's who even mm. puts www no, no, I, no I, I don't, I don't think you, I've dude that's so I haven't touched a W I haven't touched W key on a keyboard in fucking <laughs> years so just go to do you, even, do you even QWERTY bro no <laughs> no I QWERTY <laughs> I'm wordy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, you can also, when you log in, um, check out your plot. Uh, you'll be a, given a plot number. I believe you can um, communicate with other plot owners. Um, so, any of you out there that have um, that do have a plot, I'm not sure if mine's public or not, but it is now because my plot number is. Seven seven three six six zero. Uh yeah, feel free to shoot us a message. Tell me I'm a cunt. Um, yeah, tell me, tell me I've pronounced Lefroy wrong. You, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you may have opened yourself up to a world of hurt there. I'm gonna enjoy watching 
the, the rain of, of shit fall upon you from people I'm, that I'm, have something to say. I'm sorry, what's your plot number? All three of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep that to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, sounds like you may not have one. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I may have, uh, I may not be a friend of Lefroy. But you know what? That doesn't make me, you know, an enemy. No, of the it doesn't make you any less appreciative of their uh, of their nectar. No, hell no. But um, so when you when you're messaging Rick and giving him shit, and I'm all for it. I'm very supportive, <laughs> very supportive. But um, just make sure that you don't do it while you're looking at your phone when you're walking in public, <sighs> because that is probably the worst thing no it's not the worst thing there's way worse things but it's such a fucking shitty thing to do phone zombies they're killing me Rick they're fucking killing me I'm too busy seething to formulate a response (laughs) you know what the only good thing to come out of this is survival of the fittest that's true like Darwinism take a lot of these people need to be taken out of the gene pool and it's an effective way of it happening. Mm. People walking it's a... in front of buses and just... Ooh, man, those buses take a while to stop. They do. Poor bus drivers. Mm. God, it's just... What kind of... How fucking rude do you have to be to just have no awareness of anything else around you because you're that absorbed in what's... That is... Okay, the two credos that I live by, fucking try not to be in anybody's way and know your surroundings. They're good credos. Or like be be observant, sort of. Know your surroundings. More so, just be fucking observant. No wonder you hate phones, obviously, because they're breaking both of those rules. Mm-hmm. Very mm. badly. And it, um... <laughs> I won't say what I said earlier, but I'll start with, yeah... It seems to be a certain uh, certain ethnicity that tends to be more embroiled in technology than than others than other races. There, there, there can be depending on your sample size. It's uh, it, yeah. it, it, it certainly can appear that I way. I do practically live in South Korea, so <laughs> um, so yeah, I might be I have a slight bias there, but it does extend to our. Uh, even in Chinatown, in Sydney, they have now moved the uh, the crossing indicators to the footpath. So, well, hang on. So there's now lights on the ground. There are lights on the ground. There are red. What the fuck? Are you serious? No, I'm dead fucking serious. Just outside of Paddy's Markets. No fucking way. Yeah, check it out, dude. It's. It oh, I can't wait for the first person to trip over one of them and <laughs> sue the fucking council. Oh, no, they're, they're <laughs> in the ground. They're recessed into the pavement. Are they but, flush? Uh, sorry? Like flush? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're like basically... Oh, there might be a couple of millimetres with a, where the bracket kind of... Someone will find a way to fall over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I hope it's into the path of an oncoming tram when the light's red. <laughs> Because you've seen how low those trams are to the ground. Like, that's... And they're probably pretty heavy pieces of machinery. Those... Yeah, you're... You're going to be stuck under there for a while and you're going to deserve every second of it. Yeah. Keep... You know, get, if you're on a look at your phone, that's fine. But wait until you're not walking in front of fucking traffic or other people to do it. There isn't... Like, I, I hate it. You walk... Trying to walk down... Like, it's hard enough to walk down a fucking busy city sidewalk as it is and then you've got fucking idiots in front of you head buried in a phone no peripheral you notice visual, too, no like, um, awareness of what's going on around them and it just makes me want to stab them and they do everything at like one third capacity like they oh well, of course they're, they're, they're mentally hamstringing themselves because mm. you can't focus on more than one but they thing they can't even time. walk at the same fucking no. speed they normally walk at <laughs> no because your brain's just not capable of doing it mm. It's too too rich a uh, stimulus in front of you for mm. your brain to. For, uh, it's just it's. Or for what? For fucking Facebook likes? For. Yeah. Instant uh, gratification, my friend. 
instant yeah. gratification. Yeah. It's junk food for the brain. It's like those fucking pricks that watch concerts through phones. <laughs> 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 what that. kind of cunt do you have to be to hold a phone or worse yet an iPad in front of oh, your face while you're watching a fucking concert that's, yeah that's I wish sometimes I wish I took a pocket full of fish and sinkers to lob at those phones but it wouldn't be fair because I'm not I'm not terribly accurate. I'm no fucking Ricky Ponting. Oh, look, you throw a decent dart, but at the end of the day, you're not hitting bulls every time. You, yeah, there are going to be innocent bystanders hurt. If they did put a dartboard on the screen, I'd have a better <laughs> chance of hitting it, probably. <laughs> but oh, um, just I just wish, I, yeah, lobbing fish and sinkers and just smashing screens at concerts would be, that's a fantasy I have, but I'm likely to take out several other people. Yeah. And they, they don't deserve it. They're just there trying to have a good time. Well, they're, they're probably just, just as pissed off as you are because yeah, they're they going to watch some... through this fucking prick's iPad. Oh, they're standing next to me. they got fucking elbow in their face. I don't get it. I just don't get it. No. And, and also... And, and then they... It, I'm, I'm, a, I'm fucking outraged. And then they post it to YouTube. You're like, yeah, just what the world needs. Like another <laughs> another shaky fucking... Sh- the shittest sound recording... And I've heard too, like, um, from some of the other music podcasts that I listen to, like the the singers of bands and stuff, and they'll get on and they'll say, yeah, now people fucking hassle me because they reckon I sound like shit because it's being <laughs> recorded through the shittiest mic possible. Um, oh, so it's not true. fair. Stop it, people. It's not fair to uh, anybody. Yeah, yeah, uh, have some fucking dignity. And yell how many to yourself, people? Yell at everyone else. Just watch it with your fucking eyes. How many people... Do you reckon go home and rewatch the concert? I can guarantee probably about half a percent. Oh, yeah. Like, and most of those people start it and go, oh, that sounds pretty shit. And then don't even fit. Like, they, they watch 30 seconds and go, oh, fuck. Mm. That wasn't as good as I thought it was. Yeah, it's just what the world needs. Fucking way. Another concert recorded through the phone with blown out sound and shaky vision. <laughs> oh. What is wrong with these people? Sorry, I need a fucking... I need a sip to calm down. Yeah, look, yeah, it's fair. It's fair. Oh, but, um, oh there's a fresh, whole fresh new whiskey there. Yeah, let's move on to this PX cask. How many standard yeah, drinks do you reckon are in it? <laughs> <laughs> Depends. Well, in, in Japan, probably one and a half. The, that's... In Australia, however, there's three. <laughs> I really want to know who came up with the concept of the standard drink anyway. Who decided? Well, I'm sorry, but by definition, it can't be a fucking standard drink, can it? If oh, it's not, not really. standardised, yeah. like it's just your interpretation. of your. It's not even your interpretation. It's just yeah. it's pissing in the wind. Uh, it's stand- My out? standard drink might be four fingers of, you know, whiskey. That's, <laughs> that's probably... Yeah, that's the standard I set. <laughs> it's it's probably not acceptable standard to other people. <laughs> well, what did we discover? It was what it was it ten mils or ten grams? Ten grams of alcohol in Australia. That's right. It was ten mils in England, which is eight grams, because alcohol is lighter than water. Yeah, but and a I... standard drink of spirit in Australia is thirty mils for ten grams of alcohol. But approximately, of that, that's approximately. I think what's that of? 35 40 percent probably 38 or something yeah yeah yeah. somewhere slightly conservative and that's that's 10 grams of alcohol Mm. which i always thought was one fucking gram of alcohol i I poured piss stood behind bars entertained people for 10 years and always thought that 30 mils contained one gram of alcohol i missed it by a factor of 10 well yeah 10 or a factor of one one times ten. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe just forever, it. forever the optimist. <laughs> well, my glass is certainly half full. Mm. Well, this one is. Mm. God, that's nice on the Oh, nose. hello, sweet, yeah. sweet sherry notes. Mm. Dessert. Yeah, that smells like a dessert whiskey. Again, this doesn't smell super young. Yeah, you know, uh, no, it's still got that that youthful. Um, Oh, sorry. I reckon it's still got the youthful bite, but the um, it does, but it's the it's, sweetness really it, it smooths it out really a lot. Really mellows it out a lot. But yeah, super sweet on the nose. Go back to the 
yeah, so the 1815 is quite, quite jagged and probably a bit bigger, like more salty, more... Um, yeah, it's way bigger, way saltier. This is, yeah, this is very... It's refined. This is very, yeah, out, outdoors by, yeah, you're being... You're undercover, but you're being belted by the, um, by the Isla Rain, or Isla Rain. Are you still looking at the 1815 there? Sorry, yeah, that's, I just yeah. went back through succession. There's a triple woods, very, um... The triple woods, really woody. Yeah, but you still, I think you're kind of inside by the fire while that rain is belting at the window. Yeah, and it's it's not just the rain because you're real close to the beach and you get the spray mm. from the sea as well. There's there's a lot of salt there as well. It's uh, it's not as punching your face salt. But this, this PX is like a oh, it's a dessert at a at one of those big tables with lots of good friends. Yeah, you're a little bit uh, you're still on the coast, but it's a night. It's not stormy. You know, there's a there's a breeze. Up, coming off the sea, so there's a there's a, a touch of salt in the air, just a a, this, a tang, salty tang in the air. Mm. There's there's that um, you know classic iodine you know uh, undertone that you know is carried by the peat. Mm. Actually, the um the aroma kind of lies to the palate, though I think. That the salt really cuts through more than you'd expect after the okay. after nosing, I believe. But there's a lot of sweetness. Oh well, yeah, that is super sweet and salty mm. on the tongue. Yeah, but compared to the at the um, same time too, like the. Well, yeah, for yeah, that, they're for both that first, there, so. For that first sip, it's salty and sweet mm. at, at the same time. This feel, um, is almost oh, like the the great grandson of the twenty eight year old. You've got that salt, almost mm. caramel. Nice robe on it. Not as impressive as the triple wood. No, the triple woods. Yeah, nice, nice and thick. But it does have all three of them have a. And, and Lefroig in general does have that lovely kind of uh, voluptuous, almost oiliness to it. It's the, the soft water. Um, yeah, it just gives it a a viscosity that it's not, not like a Campbelltown where it's genuinely oily. But mm. there's just a, yeah, it's a nice softness to it. it it's... It doesn't taste hard. It doesn't feel hard mm. in the mouth. There's a nice softness to the whiskey mm. in the mouth. Yeah, it doesn't have the the pepper that the um, triple wood left you with. Was it the... Yeah, it was the triple wood had that white pepper. There's very little, if any, at all in the PX, which Second, uh, which sorry. was also a. Uh, a travel retail exclusive, which was one of the um. I was gonna say, should actually, yeah, this is that's going back to episode one, um, where uh, I was coming coming back from Europe, <laughs> coming back from Europe, and um, at the duty free shop, I asked I asked the woman if she was much of a whiskey ah. enthusiast, and she said no. But um, this is actually the same bottle. I've managed to hold on to it for that long. There you go. That's fucking um, cool. Nice tie. And she said, no, but this is a travel retail exclusive. You won't get it anywhere else. And I went, oh, okay, fuck it. Yeah, I'll go with one of those. And when I got home, I was I was so freaking disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this? Is this still, is this still scotch? <laughs> Jesus Christ. What the hell happened to this? <laughs> so, yeah, it took me, little did I know, like, yeah, two to three years later that's fantastic <laughs> oh that's a great tie-in yeah I'm, I'm chuffed as fuck by that that's that's <laughs> fantastic so now yeah this is uh, this is one of my favorites actually it's a really good after dinner dram i think well i can see you put a very very good dent in a very very big bottle oh, i have had it for the best part of what seven or eight years yeah still in all But it's only been a favourite recently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it took a while to warm up too. 
Yeah, it would have it would have sat on my shelf like barely past the uh, <laughs> barely past the label for quite some time so until this... probably until that whiskey show, I'd say. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was a that was a great experience. Yeah. It's uh, it, it really opened opened the door for you to experience a oh. larger range, and it was the same for me though. I like, I never really liked sherry finish expressions. I was the opposite to you. Yeah, I remember I was, you used to say they were just too sweet yeah, for you. Yeah, they were just too sweet, too sharp. You know, too much high note, not enough bottom end. Um, uh, but, you know, when you develop your paddle a little bit and you drink enough whiskey and you spend enough time drinking whiskey with mates talking about it, that's for me. I mean, that's that's what whiskey's all about. Yeah, that's what I live for. That's, that's that sitting around, talking shit, drinking whiskey, talking shit about the whiskey talking shit about the world and having it's, a couple of laughs along the way fucking a that's the reason it's the reason we drink whiskey it's the reason we're doing this it's just a few nights on the px cask anyway it's um it's also made with whiskey matured in three types of casks seems to be a bit of a theme uh, american oak x bourbon followed by the quarter casks so yeah more more contact with the wood and the third maturation is in um, large European oak titular Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. Um, and the claim is it uh, leads to a flavour profile which ties together like classic powerful Laphroaig smoke and wine-like sweetness, um, which is marketing spin I actually agree with this time yeah look yeah, I mean they've, they've not oversold themselves there it's uh, it is it's it's a lovely marriage a marriage that's a lovely marriage <laughs> of the uh, of the peat and the sherry and there's you know the, the wood binds it together nicely yeah the wood's um not as celebrated really though I find no so what is it um The, the, what did you say, titular? What, what's a titular? Like, um, pertaining to title. That's what I thought. So, yeah, what yeah. the the, the titular Pedro Jimenez casks? That's what's right. PX. Ah, uh, of that's course, what pertaining to, to the yeah, yeah, pertaining to title the PX. on the label. That yeah, makes yeah. Yeah. sense. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, it's sort of uh, pretty well lauded. Actually, I don't know if I just used the right word. Um. Are you saying it's got awards? I sure I am. I reckon Lauded works there. All right, great. Uh, Lauded, celebrated. Excellent, yeah, excellent. They're, they're cool. synonyms, I think. My English hasn't failed me. I did. Or I, it's failed us both. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we. you knew what I meant. A sample size of one, I'll fucking run with that for <laughs> as long as I can. A one for one, fucker. <laughs> Uh, this year actually got silver at the International Wine and Spirits Competition and it did the same back in 2016 uh, in 2017 it got silver at the International Spirits Challenge and in 2014 and 15 it got a silver outstanding at um, the International Wine and Spirits Competition that's pretty good yeah it's doing alright for itself it's still yet to crack a gold one but, well um, it's, I think it's hard for a it's got to be hard for a no-age statement whiskey to crack yeah, a gold. I I mean, at the end of the I day, agree. you know, the thing that makes a gold gold medal whiskey a gold medal whiskey is the fact that it's spent fucking time in wood, and it's it's smooth and rounded, and it's got all the things that these have, plus that that age. You know, that's that'd be my only criticism of all three of the whiskeys. They're all, you know, genuinely drinkable and and. The triple wood, uh, especially, is an exceptional no age statement. Yeah, it's, but, oh, but, it's so much more complex than um than the PX or the 1815. 100 percent. Like it's so it's, much more going on. You it's the pick of the whiskeys. That for ages. Yeah, but um, it depends what you're after. Because at the moment, I'm really enjoying the PX. I'm enjoying the PX absolutely. My pick out of these three at this point is the triple wood. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree. My my pick would be the yeah would be the triple wood. But um, but there's nothing. If you wrong could just with choose one. Yeah, yeah, but there's nothing wrong with the PX. And as I said, they're, they're great expressions. For, it might for just no age. even be the, the the time of day where the PX is just doing it for me. Yeah. A bit earlier in the day, maybe a triple would be would be more of a go to. But 
after the um, after the PX. Yeah, it's the nice, uh, nice wood though to the to the AD fifteen. Yeah, the, the, base, the, the wood is is the the hero of the eighteen fifteen. Yeah, it smells gorgeous. Just that um. Yeah, I'm just struggling with the complexity of the triple wood at the moment. There's just so much going on. It's really hard to focus on one element or another. Yeah, especially going back to it after the PX as well. Mm. Yeah, after you've had that sherry bomb. I had a bit of competition back in the day, actually. A few a few rivals tried to uh, give them a run for their money. Um and not long after they established, actually, they got their establishment certificate back in uh, 1826. Um, nine years later, uh, another distillery at the adjacent, I'll try and pronounce this right, Ardenistiel, Ardenistiel, not sure where the accent goes. Hey, you probably pronounce it fucking Sharon if it's Gaelic. <laughs> um, in 1835... <laughs> Um, it was financed by James and Andrew Gardner on a piece of land they released um, from Campbell as well, who was also, yeah, Dojo and Aljo's um, landlords. Jagar and Angar. <laughs> um, Donald uh, fruitlessly protested against these plans a year earlier. Um, he was a bit worried it was going to cause problems with the water supply from the uh, Seneg burn to Lafroig. Um, as uh, Dennis Steele was only 200 yards away. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, so it's at a couple hundred metres? Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't just fucking, what, just... Just, <laughs> just lob, move in. <laughs> or just lob sods of peat at the dude. No, just fucking crap in his peat bog. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, James and Andrew, um, they ran the show it was sometimes it was um it was also known as like isla or killed alton distillery um and both distilleries they'd had their quarrels for a fair while usually over land or water rights i'm pretty sure i read somewhere that one of the competing distilleries having you know as they were hostile neighbors didn't one of them block the stream like actually build a stone dam That's entirely possible. And I think that they actually had to take them to court and get a court order to get them to uh, take down the fucking stone dam that they built so they got their Fair water income. back. Yeah. That's I, unreal. I'm fairly certain I read that. That is amazing. No, yeah, I didn't I didn't read that. <laughs> um, but in the 1860s, that uh, Denis Steele um, hadn't been that successful and... Um, it actually got uh, blended into uh, Lefroy. Pretty much they acquired, somehow acquired the uh, the infrastructure there. If you can't beat them, join them. Um, but also for a while, um, for 70 or 80 years, um, the Mackies of the neighbouring Lagavulin distillery, um, that acted for agents for Lefroy, um, and that had worked pretty well for... Um, for all of uh, Ian Hunter's predecessors, but um, Hunter, when he came along, decided to uh, terminate the agency in 1908, and um, a fair few law cases followed. They were not happy. No. They were not happy at all. You can imagine, yeah, it sounded like it was um, sort of somewhat profitable for, for both parties. Um until, yeah, I don't know, Hunter wasn't much of a stickler for nostalgia. He wasn't even a Johnston, really. <laughs> so, no, fuck that. Uh, wasn't he the last of the Johnsons? Uh, he, oh, he was, yeah, he was the last... Um, descendant. Was descendant, yeah, to, to run the show. Um, uh, Mackie, though, he tried to copy Lefroig whiskey in a new distillery at Lagerfallen called Malt Mill. Um, and that that wasn't successful either. Um, I think I read that they actually made everything a carbon copy yeah. of the of the, the setup at Lefroy and but because yeah, same water source, same design stills, yeah. and 
same Probably barrel same, maturation. Same peat sauce. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And yet the whiskey was completely different. Now I, I, I didn't enjoy reading that because my favourite whiskey is like a fallen sixteen year old. And in in this story, they're the pricks. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mackie's the real. Prick. Well, Mackie's the yeah. prick exactly. But I mean, shit. Credit to Lagavulin. They got it right in the end because they make a mm. fucking exceptional whiskey yeah, now. 16 is, mm. is pretty damn good. But I, yeah, it's easy to say, well, it's not easy to say what your favourite whiskey is, but uh, Lafroy for me is, is certainly up there. It's um, I think it's an exceptional distillery. It, uh, it releases exceptional expressions. And... Long may the Isla spirit continue to be profitable and dominant. Because, oh, fuck, if we run out of peat, I'll cry. <laughs> it just, will happen one day. I know, but, you know. Not in our lifetime, thankfully. Thank God. Unless, you know, unless they beat this whole death thing that, you know, they've been trying to do for a while. <laughs> yeah, I've just decided to add a few drops of water. And, and I was um, inspired by you, my friend. Oh, and geez, that's, yeah. Oh, that opens, mm. that opens the 1815 up quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, you start getting a, a bit of sweetness. There is the a little bit of sweetness in there. The 1815. Oh, that has a, really has a nice aroma to it now. Yeah, it's a, I mean, the wood is now accompanied, the, the, the peat and the wood are now oh. accompanied by some a nice floral, mm. um, you know, kind of. Um, oh, it's almost and the flavour. It's almost like um, oh, like that was a drop of sugar syrup. Yeah, it it smells quite sweet. Yeah, it's open compared to how it it smelled before. So the same thing happened when I did this to um an art beak the other night. Oh, that's become really, really pleasant. I actually prefer that mm -hmm. with a drop. I, I, it's rare that I'll add a drop. I agree. And say, yes, this is how I would prefer to drink this whiskey. I, I love adding a drop to open it up and to, you know, for, for the effect that that drop has for this kind of tasting uh, situation. But that's actually, I think, a, a better whiskey at probably mm -hmm. 40 five or 44 and yeah, a half we wouldn't have cut it too much i no. only added about five drops no I, I probably got i think i need 30 mils left i think i only added a drop and a half mm. i think on the other hand with um i've just moved on to the triple wood it's actually subdued that to quite a degree but i'm getting like a Oh, I just... Okay, this might sound a bit odd, but I just got, um... Oh, okay, when I make, when I make like, a Napolitana sauce, I chuck in, like, a little bit of sugar and a little bit of cinnamon. Secret Clever. ingredient mm -hmm. is a pinch of cinnamon. Clever. And I just got a little bit of a throw, throw back to that. Yeah, well, I called it nutmeg before, but maybe it's... Maybe it's kind of a nutmeggy, but I know what you mean. It's there's a, a sweet spice yeah. in there that's not dominant. It's quite subtle, but it was there on the nose. No, fuck it, it's both cinnamon <laughs> and nutmeg. <laughs> not sure if it's benefited from the drop much. Though. That sweetness has been no, not on has the palate. Basically murdered. Not on the palate at all. No. The pepper's been wound down, though. It's not peppery. Any. It's a, it is quite a different whiskey with a few drops. It is a really different whiskey with a bit of water. Um, I think it, the complexity's been stifled. Yeah, it it, all it does is bring out the peat, for my mm. money. Yeah, it, it does. It brings out the peat and the salt. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't a good decision there. Oh, I, no, look, it was worth no, a try. No, it's, I think it's a good decision, you know, but <laughs> yeah, it's just this whiskey just didn't appreciate the water. It's it's been bottled at the right it has. strength. Yeah, it really has. 
I keep fucking doing that. I reckon I've done that five times tonight. I fucking held my glass in my right hand and then gone and fucking ran it straight into the microphone. <laughs> ah, generous pause. <laughs> Oh, that's nice wow. on the nose. The PX. The molasses that mm. comes through there, treacle. And... Yeah. That's weird. This is, seems to have gotten sweeter on the nose. Already. It has. It's gotten... Well, know, I guess the 1815 did get sweeter. It's it's interesting how the triple wood didn't. Well, the, and the 1815, there's no sherry in that, is there? Uh, oh... No, no, it's not. Mm. Um, first fill over charred ex bourbon, and then new European oak hogs heads. Yeah, so the sweetness that comes in there by, by adding the drop mm. doesn't come from the sherry. I'm I'm not sure where it comes from, but no. um, but the the drop in the PX. I mean, fucking boom! You know that's Whoa. that's molasses. That it's my um, first sip though. The time. Oh my god, that's. Oh, I could session on this for. Jeez, I could drink this by the cup full now. Yeah, right, okay. I'm still trying to tease apart. Is there a little bit of pear in there? There's a pear in there. <laughs> <laughs> and smoke as well. <laughs> Sherry and grapes. I knew if I let you keep going. <laughs> and a salty smell. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Mm. Oh, that's gorgeous. So yeah, the PX in the 1815 definitely benefit from a couple of drops. Whoa. Oh, it's almost like a fucking cordial. You know, that I could, you could, Yeah. That is so smooth, you could down that like nothing. Funnily enough, the drop seems to have added to the viscosity of it. That's what I noticed with the triple wood. Um, unfortunately, I've used my nice tulip for... um for the RPX cask and it's really hard to see through the etching yeah I reckon it has ab it is visually increased the robe <laughs> yeah which is yeah that's Pe fucking peculiar. weird peculiar well it seems counterintuitive it does but um yeah I'm no expert. No, I'm not. But a Jesus, it's so. It's it's like a. It's like a big oily, sweet, bang mm. in your mouth. That's just. You get the smoother. It's more balanced. Oh, it's voluptuous around the tongue. Yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah, it's a dessert whiskey. Yeah. A legit dessert whiskey. You could pour this over ice cream and it would not be out of place. That'd be a fucking horrendous, horrendous waste of single malt. <laughs> and if I ever saw you do it, I would, I'd get very upset. Actually, I wouldn't I, get upset. I do have another liter and there's what? <laughs> maybe, I wouldn't get upset, maybe, but... Maybe three I'd make left. you eat the whole thing because I think it would be... I, I can't imagine ice cream and whiskey being good together. I could imagine that um, Americ, whatever it was, the Breton. God, that was that was amazing. That was super sweet. Yeah, that that no ice cream. All right, I, I want to say it. <laughs> I want to see you. It doesn't have to be a, a large serve, but I want to see you eat a small serve of ice cream with whiskey as a topping. And I'd like, in fact, I think we might have to do a podcast episode about it. Yeah, to the very least film it. Yep. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm stand by my words. Okay, good. I want to see it. I, I legit want to so see it. So it was this or the Americ? Por que no los dos? Fuck it out, both. <laughs> yep. Good. All right, excellent. For my viewing, viewing pleasure. Mm. So, I'm going to throw your own question at you. What music... Oh, I'm going to paraphrase your question. What music does Lefroy go with? Ah, oh, look, I'm going to throw the quick and easy answer out and say that Lefroy goes with all music, though. <laughs> but these whiskies, for me, are... Uh, Melodic death metal. Hmm. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Complex. I'm feeling that. But fucking. Feeling like a children of Bodom or a soil mm. work or something like that. Something. Yeah, very. Actually, then they. I think they're both Swedish. I oh, know children of Bodom are Finnish. I think. Are you Finnish? No, I'm just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're they're melodic. Uh, so the the complex. There's you know top end and bottom end but there's there's a fucking force to them mm. you know that that you know pushes along that salt and that peat drive mm -hmm. the complexity through so the 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 harmony plays over such a solid foundation of you know uh, a thumping double kick mm. you know that's you know just really well written these whiskies are really well written in yeah. melodic death metal. Ooh. I won't whip out the big guns. I was about to say carcass heart work, which Oy, is... Oi, hey, that, hey, hey. Yeah, hey, that's, hey. Nah, that's a bit too bold. That it's is, episode three, bro. Yeah, that probably is my favourite album of all time, and I don't think I can quite put these whiskies in the same, uh, on the same rung of the ladder. Well, you know, it's... But they're not too far behind. No, they're not. Like, they're, they're, oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're up there. I, but, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. That's one of the greatest albums ever written. You can't go throwing that around. Oh, well, for, me, in there's, for three. me, there is none more greater. For, for my money, anyway. There are a lot of people out there that will disagree. <laughs> oh, look, you know, it's, it's funny. The people's favourite albums are, um, uh, fuck, I've seen some people get upset. <laughs> oh, okay. How about something we might both agree on? Um, this isn't like a machine head in a way, quite possibly. They're pretty melodic death. Almost, they're more, almost more straight up heavy metal. They're straight up metal, but they've got a, a melodic complexity to Actually, them. yeah, they're not so much death, are they? They don't no. really blast that much. But at the same time, you know, maybe the... Maybe the intensity of the smoke and the um, uh, the salt isn't death. You know, maybe it's maybe it's just really well written metal. In which case, I think Machine Head. Yeah. It's a prime candidate. I'll I will accept all these three whiskies. Mm. I feel I personally, I feel it's more Euro. I'll I'll stand by my um, children boat or more um or soil work. Um, just that just, you led me. You, 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 you took me away from where I was. You took me over to a, a spot where you wanted me to be, and then you went, fuck you, Hursty. You're there on your own. I'm going back. There goes that tablecloth. <sighs> uh, hopefully you're still standing. Oh, the rug. It's been pulled out from under me. <laughs> what a cunt. TV, um, TV show? Oh, all right. What TV show is it? You know what? This isn't a shit TV show. I mean, it's a reality TV. Is this... Hmm. Oh, I've got, yeah. Actually, I've got something that's kind of regional as well, but I'd like to hear your answer first. So I enjoy this, and I fucking enjoy the show that I'm about to see. Oh, well, I'm, I'm kind of stumped. I think we've been doing reality TV shows for the last couple of episodes. Well, well, it could be reality. If this was if this was a reality TV show, this would be.
But it feels like it's kind of, you know, like the higher end of reality TV shows. Like, you know, ooh, it's a quiz show. Nice, nice. I fucking, if, if there is any genre of TV apart from, like, documentary and science-based documentaries, it is fucking quiz shows. Yeah, you know, I think this is, this is, this could be, this the, is a the British... The family feud of whiskey. This is, well, no, I, I think this is, this is like... Um, a more Sale of the Century style? No, maybe like a, 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 a Buzzcocks or a QI. Oh, yeah, nice. Like, you know, it's, it's, even, it's entertaining well, yeah. and, and nice. educational and you've, and you've, at the same time. And you've kept it to the uh, to the region. Yeah. Which is pretty, pretty good. I was I was going for uh, I reckon black books. Oh yeah, yeah. I could. Uh, it's uh, it's not as dark as black books though. Yeah, perhaps not. Perhaps not. But, but I like you. Yeah, I like your quiz show. I do like black books. Yeah. That's a fucking. So great I fucking show. love the chase. <laughs> Family Feud used to be one of my favorite TV shows ever. I love playing the board game. I have to be the host when people come over to play the board oh, game. That's fair. They're at your oh, house. I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Well, you have to be the host. They're at your fucking house. <laughs> I, I love Specs and Specs and QI. And, mm. you know, yeah, QI is brilliant. Get, that really is. It's, yeah. it's exceptional. Oh, I could go on forever, but quiz shows, I love it. Even the topical ones that you watch years later and don't understand the, the context of the British politics that you're watching at the time, they still make you laugh. Yeah, that's the only yeah, problem with the British version of the chase. Um, some of the general knowledge is, yeah, very regional specific, yeah. and like mock the week and things like that are very, yeah, you yeah. know, very topical. Yeah. Lovely. What, what kind of book is this whiskey? Oh, I'm probably not as well. Um, I'm nowhere. Actually, I know for a fact I'm nowhere near as well read as you are. I uh, think this is a. Um, I think this is a, a, a classic, like a, you know. It does, it, it does strike me as going very well with like our, probably our preferred genre, which tends to be like fiction wise anyway, which is sci-fi or high fantasy. Yeah, high fantasy, sci-fi. This would, um, this would probably be, uh, it'd be high fantasy so you're looking at I like could a, really run this like while reading um what was it Silverthorn was that the sequel to Magician that it was, was really, the sequel to Magician it was pretty compared to Magician it was pretty hard and fast it was oh yeah, yeah. big time because yeah. Magician was the time Silverthorn <laughs> yeah, was, was yeah, yeah. Was Silverthorn and, yeah, yeah uh, it was a fucking the, doorstop what was the third one the Darkness, the Darkness of Seth, Seth and I yeah. so those two together still weren't as thick as yeah, uh, yeah true. Magician but that's a good trilogy. Yeah, it yeah, <coughs> really, really was. So this is the Magician trilogy, is it? Close to, yeah. I could, oh, I could just imagine just um, Silverthorn, just what they had to go through. They were in a cold place. You'd want a nice whiskey to keep you warm. Fucking oath, you would. It's amazing how fucking people in fantasy books get themselves fucked up in snow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a par for the course. It really is. Like, I think, you know... Winter is coming. <laughs> It was a fucking winter's finish, thank Christ. Yes, yeah, wasn't, wasn't that appalling? Uh, and it wasn't even a bad winter. Like it was a, it was a mild winter. Oh, so I was referring to Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh, okay, right, okay, that, yeah. The past fifteen seconds of my vocal fucking diarrhea was totally wasted on you. Well, I got that winter was coming is a Game of Thrones reference, okay. but yeah. I no, it's, it's, I was thinking about it the other day. It would have been... Actually, I was thinking about it this morning, I think. It would have been fucking piss funny if so many people wanted this one bitch dead at the end. It would have been hell funny if they all just had have come together and then had a massive argument about who got to kill her. <laughs> that would have been good. But there was this one character, and oh, she was awesome. She spent all this time becoming like... um, Become this hang on, mad hang on. warrior. Are you just like fucking... Like cock slapping me in the face with potential spoilers uh to, are you ever gonna watch it potentially I'd say read the fucking thing don't watch it got, I didn't man. like the books that's why I haven't read uh, okay. I, I thought I honestly think he's so overrated as an author okay so yeah I didn't 
I want to go back and read it now because I reckon it'll probably be better than... Actually, just the end was so underwhelming. So fucking underwhelming. Just so many years of character development to just... To do that to everybody at the end, like... Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I'm sorry that this has had such an impact. It was me. brilliant, man. But up he hasn't finished the books yet, has up he? Up until the last episode, it was absolutely brilliant. But he hasn't finished the books yet, has he? I don't believe so. No, yeah. no, the, the the show overtook the books, yeah. Yeah, look, I'll probably get around to watching it at some point. I've, yeah. I've only heard good things about it. It is, um, a, it is um, a visual spectacular. It is one of the best. Um, but I started being a dick about it early on. It's been, nah, fuck, I don't like the books, and everyone else is watching it. Yeah, it's fucking too popular for me. And I was just a bit of a dick about it. And now we're what? How many seasons did they do? I think I did eight. Eight? Yeah. I've been a dick for eight years. It's just that single respect. I mean, in a bunch of different respects, and yeah, for longer periods of time, surely, but yeah, in that particular respect, Mm -hmm. I've been a dick about it for eight years. So yeah, I'll probably stop being a dick about it at some point. But you never know. I'm stubborn. Well, on that note, I think we've uh, probably waffled on long enough. We anyway. have. But I've enjoyed doing this. This is this is yeah. been, uh, yeah, these have been great. Dra- it's been wonderful yeah. to visit Isla. Yeah, damn um, straight. It was really, uh, once again, really want to um, thank Dan and Webster's. Oh, yeah, that for was, doing the, was uh, amazing. The tasting that's... Um, Really, you know, made us go down with this any, road. With any episode. luck, uh, hopefully we one day um, get the reputation where um, we can actually have him on as a guest. I would love to. Would love to. Um, you know, talk whiskey with him. It was. Mm. He's he's a guy who knows his stuff, and um, it was it was nice to have a a, a quick chat with him um, on the night. So, but once again, thanks to uh, Dan and Webster's for a fantastic uh, experience. Thank you for Lafroy for making some fucking fantastic mm. whiskey. Thanks Rick for doing this with me. And for those of you listening, thank you very much for listening and until next time. Sluncher. Sluncher. <laughs>